This is very loud and colorful. We're here. For people who are native, to be able to see something and be like, I really identify with that or that, you know, that image and that symbolism, it just means so much. About us having visibility, about us um, elevating our voices. Somebody's gonna look at it and say, what is that tobacco teaching? Why is the hand so big in the, in the center of that? What about the turtles and the fish? Because like every fish has a story. Every, you know, the turtle has many stories. There's just thousands of stories. And hopefully people look at that and they get curious about it. And they, they go on the journey of learning the stuff that they were never taught. Buju Wabunanga Gokwe Indigenous Kanegu. My name is Michelle Defoe, and I'm from Red Cliff, Wisconsin. I am Lake Superior Ojibwe, and I am an artist on this mural. Um, there's many artists, and I got to design a few pieces on the wall here. So my name is Muri Villiard. I grew up on the Fond du Lac Reservation. My dad is a Fond du Lac enrollee, so I'm a direct descendant, not enrolled. Um, but I grew up there, uh, and I do a lot of uh, indigenous land acknowledgement, community collaborative art projects. And then I like to include ricing because I, I just think it's such an interesting story of you know the Anishinaabe migration to this area and how it became you know. Such a, such a significant historical, you know, part of, of being here um, that a lot of people, I think, in the mainstream don't really know about. The mainstream narrative of Native people is very negative. Like, there's a, the image of, like, they're just drunk or they're homeless, and it, we're represented in all of these really bad statistics, and that's all you ever hear, you know, sort of covered about Native people. And so to be able to be like, hey, we contribute beautiful things, we contribute beautiful art, we're contributing to this community, um, and we're a part of it, I think that's just incredibly important, especially when we're living on territory that you know, has such a complicated history of you know, the settlers coming and then the Treaty of 1854 and everything like that. Um, there's just a complicated history and nobody knows it, and then we only see these negative statistics and it's just, there's so many misconceptions about Native people that it makes it hard to exist here. And even, you know, while we were painting it, sometimes people would come up and have questions. And um, it was really sometimes hard to describe, you know, um, some of the, the significance of the mural or the Asema or things like that, because people just don't know. And you get that awkward moment of having to explain. And so hopefully having this artwork and this visual representation gets people used to seeing us so that future generations won't have to answer as many questions and be put on the spot constantly, like repeating themselves and you know, going through what we are going through right now as artists trying to, to, to connect with the community sometimes. Over the years, we've slowly been um, creating space here for us with our own voices and our own vision. It's important that we tell our own stories. Um, we've had non-Native artists do art pieces that are revolved around our stories, and they were not told accurately, so that's even more frustrating. Usually I have like hundreds of people who come out and help at like a time, but we had to limit it to, to one apartment building of kids which was fine because kids are everywhere all over the place anyway um, but also just that idea of like being able to sort of quickly like make a dragonfly outline and instead of having kids design stuff on site um, being able to have them submit that online and then get a little gift card for you know their their contributions um, that was a really cool part of you know an unexpectedly interesting way I guess to have people engage during the pandemic I've heard a lot of people talk about how they're struggling with mental health um, under a lot of restrictions and a lot of pressure and a lot of stress and how do we deal with that um, not being able to connect how we normally do which is maybe through large social gatherings powwows um, dancing singing feasting being together and so it's a little difficult to be able to find how do we support ourselves now because we can't get into big group gatherings like that. Um, and so 
this is the reminder here too that there's other ways to receive that help. Even though it's difficult and we want to be able to be with our, our community, um, the plants and the animals are our community too. So I think for me, it's a reminder that we have our traditional ways as well and the reminder of our stories and all the strength that come from our traditional teachings. And so when you look at this mural, there's a lot of Ojibwe teachings in here to pull out. And um, the reminder that we're not alone, um, the plant life and the fish life are here and they've always been here. And they're like our ancestors, they're older than us. And um, so if we need help or we're having a hard time, we can always offer tobacco, which is our first teaching, tobacco offerings, and ask for help. And so they're there to help us and um, they care about us and love us. And so that's incorporated in our teachings. The beautiful parts are resilience. You know, because what Miri was talking about, people like to focus on the trauma and the, you know, the horrible parts, which is important to know about. But what about the resilient parts of us? You know, what about the parts that give us strength? And um, so hopefully this mural helps people identify with that too. Funding for this program is brought to you by the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.